Hello, my historical fashion friends. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to make the finger loop braid that will lace up this kirtle. Right now, I'm just using um, two pieces of string that I use for tablet weaving, and that is not suitable. And because I'm me, I couldn't help but do an experiment. So today, we're going to be using these three different colored hand-sun wool yarns to make our finger loop braid and see what pattern comes out. I am very excited. This is my first time doing finger loop braiding and I am really looking forward to seeing what kind of patterns I can make with my finger loop braid and I'll be doing a second finger loop braid episode when my gold kirtle is finished. And I'll also be doing a video on attaching my finger loop braid to my aglets, which I have purchased from Etsy. If you like videos like this and you want to see how I made this green kirtle, which I absolutely adore, you can hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the episode. This dress has been a long time coming and I love it so much. First thing, we are going to need to cut enough of our yarn for the entire length. I am using my kitchen table and I have a clamp secured on the opposite side, which I am going to secure the ends to as it will help me maintain the tension. Now we need to have the yarns in a loop so we can go around our fingers. So every single strand I am cutting will need to be twice as long as the length of my table. And we will need five yarns in total. I am going to be doing two of the green, two of the yellow, and one of the red. This project is very simple and all you will need is a uh, something to tie your ends to. I am using a clamp on a table because it's easier for me to demonstrate it on a uh, flatter surface but you can always just use a table leg if you have a sturdy table or a doorknob if you want or even something like a stair banister if you have a sturdy stair banister. All right, let's cut our yarns. So my uh, wool threads here are very prone to tangling up. So I have created this elaborate situation to stop them from doing so, so we can continue. Okay, number one, number two, number three. Oh my god. No! No. Like the second I let go of the tension on this, it just wants to completely coil up. Okay. Here are our strings. We are gonna go in through here, in through here. And then with our free finger, you're gonna go in, in, and then pull that up. Now, move and go in, in, and pull that. This is going to be in my way, isn't it? 
We're gonna move our finger to leave a little free finger. And we're gonna go in, in, in. Please enjoy the sound effects. And I think this could be a very relaxing thing to do while you watch TV or something. Alexa, stop. Okay, hey y'all, so, I don't even need to do that right now. <clears throat> so, um, I'm editing the video, and I realized, I was like, oh, the second time I did this, I used my ring finger, but the first time I used my pointer finger, I wanted to test out to make sure that it would be the same if I did do it um, with the going over method using my pointer finger and it does work. I'm trying out on a third, um, braid, yes, so to speak. And it is working to do it this way. So I much prefer using my pointer finger to go through. I don't, maybe it's just more dexterous because of video games. So, um, I personally would recommend doing it this way and going through and then over, um, even though the tutorials I've seen have done it a couple of different ways and then just everything's the same. And it is making a single braid and, um, these colors are making me like really have like McDonald's ketchup and mustard vibes. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to like interject here. Um, now because of these yarns, I'm stuck finishing this and because uh, if I put it down, it will become hopelessly tangled for all of eternity. All right, back to our usual programming. It must be 1 p.m. So yes, as you saw earlier, you want to make sure that your yarns are not tangled because this won't work if they are because the other strings have to go through each other and uh, you'll immediately have a problem if your strings are tangled up. I don't know if like anyone ever, anyone else played those like string games when you were a kid in the 90s like do kids still do that because we used to play all these games where there was like partners with string and I feel like stuff like that is sort of remnants from these crafts that we used to do historically and parents would still like teach that to their kids but now we don't need to make these sorts of things but it's just really interesting to think about you know, sort of vestigial actions that we all do or we might learn as a child that don't really have a use now for us, but they've just sort of hung over. Um, yeah, so if you've seen Morgan Donner's video, she did hers on a table, flat down like this, but, uh, I find it easier to do it this way. It sort of makes me more confused to do it flat. I think it just sort of depends on, you know, your own brain and style and what's easiest for you. Like, I think if you were able to kind of like sit and watch TV, it might be easier to do it this way. But for some people to look at it from above might be the easier choice. And uh, I'm gonna try to put this uh, down So now I am going to show you what it is starting to look like. And um, basically you just do this over and over until it's done. And 
this is a very easy pattern, so, you know, it's not very easy to mess up because you'll always have three strings on one side and two strings on the other, and you won't be able to pick the string up if you have one on the pointer finger, so you'll always know to move them down. Well, you have to be careful about uh, it flying away. Hopefully that didn't fly away too badly. Um, so yes, move your fingers, take your free finger. You're gonna go in, so basically if they were all lined up, you would just go in like this and grab the other one and pull it open. And just make sure that when you are picking up your strings, you're always starting with the matching finger. So don't accidentally go down here. Make sure you're coming together and start point your finger down and then pull it. Okay, so strangely what I've discovered is that I've ended up with basically two single braided patterns. I messed it up a couple of times and by tangling my threads and don't do that. And I feel like I haven't done it exactly right. This, this is where it's actually all on together. And then my yarn broke and everything got tangled up. And so we're gonna see, I guess, how, how this went. Okay, so here's our finished braid. Uh, it has a gap in the middle, and I did read about this, and now I can't remember what it said. But sometimes when I messed up, it made it reattached to itself. And so I feel like there must be some extra step that I am missing to make them attach to each other. Because I'm me, obviously, I couldn't let this mystery go unsolved. So um, I went back, redid my reading on this and discovered what I had done wrong. We are going with this finger in, in, then over, then pulling it through. Then we're doing this, we're going in, in. There's no, that's the one I, oh, that, and then around. Basically in the reverse, although I assume it would work the other way too. over and the other stitch that let me not stitch the other pattern I was using is actually what you do if you want to make like a hole for buttonholes so you could alternate that method with this method if you wanted to make a hole uh, basically a break in your braid I'm gonna go in and over Switch. Then we're gonna go in, in, over. 
And I'm using a different yarn now because the other one was very tangly. Thank you all for watching. I hope you stay tuned for my next video. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and be sure to press the notification bell. Otherwise you won't know. And I will see you next time.